Okay, here we go. The mythology of the Warcraft universe is melting away. What was once myth yeah, I feel is like now a character who we can meet. The I don't like how they gave away Elune's identity. I, I wasn't a big fan of that. I liked it as kind of just like being this unknown force. Pantheon, Sargaris, I mean hell, we've even seen and walked around in the afterlife. And now, next, it is Elune. Yep. Patch 9.1 brings with it her reveal. So will it be satisfying? Well, we don't know quite yet, but I will say this. There's actually big potential here. So okay. let's look at the lore reveals. Let's dive okay. into some mind-bending speculation. And let's build an incredible site with today's sponsor, Squarespace.com okay. forward slash Bellular okay. Gaming, where that Bellular Gaming code yeah, I've not will been get a fan you 10% uh, yeah, off your first purchase. That's what I thought. Head up that link down in Very the video funny. description. Very funny. It's now just look, a Naru. It's simple. Squarespace no, it's a the fastest and easiest way for you a to get a great looking website quickly. At least I think I so. I have made three sites with them so far far. Yeah, three. That's what I'm There's assuming, our at game least. studios sort of quick and dirty showcase that we put together in as good under as an hour yeah, sure. before Gamescom when we were doing okay. some uh, pitching and things. Okay. There's the Bellular site where we did our job listings. And over the past few weeks, you've seen Squarespace. the loot showcase and store site that I was able to build from the comfort of my sofa on an iPad. So okay. you've seen how useful they've been for us. We've used them right, long now before they sponsor the channel. Here they we go. really have everything you need to get started. Even HTML's now having membership not functionality as well. Whatever. So start off your I mean, free you know trial at squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. <laughs> Code Bellular Gaming for your first 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace, for supporting the channel. Mm -hmm. Let's go and get into this delicious All right, now we actually get to watch lore. the video. Here we go. Between the Night Warrior stuff and Battle for Azeroth, and a few things in Shadowlands, okay. I think we knew we were going to be getting some big Eloon lore. The first hint of this, of course, came it's during Saranda. the Night Fae campaign. Yeah. And this is when the oh, Winter Queen okay. actually called Yazera her sister's pet. Yeah. Yeah, her sister's pet. Initial theories pointed to both Elune and Aenar, the Titan, yeah. being this sister of the Winter Queen. But recent reveals have confirmed that it it's is, Elune. in fact, Elune. Yeah. The implications are massive, so let's go into the details. So that means that, like, Elune is on the same power level as, like, the Winter Queen, I would kind of assume. The background story is a long one. I'll do it short. Okay. We travel with Huln High Mountain to gather other night warriors who have found themselves in the Shadowlands. What the course, fuck? I never even played that. We do all of that. this to see that's if cool. we can work out how to save Tyrande. And that's because okay. in every case thus far, becoming the Night Warrior, the Avatar of Elune's Fury, has left the host rather dead. Yeah, and I we wonder don't why. don't want this to happen to Tyrande. So, we, the three Night Warriors, mm -hmm. Yzera, Huln, Chandris, and the Winter Queen, that's cool. all try to save Tyrande in a ritual. Damn. Chandris holds her down, and each Night Warrior is then amazed at the scope, the breadth, the intensity of Tyrande's oh. rage. And just as it seems that that rage is going to be cataclysmically explosive, a cutscene plays. We have not yet seen it, but the dialogue afterwards is revealing. Okay. Chandris could barely believe what she saw, and neither could Tyrande, even though it was playing out through her person. Toronto claimed that she was present for every moment that occurred, but that she was outside herself. What Chandris the fuck? commented on the beauty and the sorrow in her voice and of the tear left behind. A tear that oh. Toronto says is as much her own as it was hers. Who is her? Well, that tear, by the That's way, a is a tear, tear. of a loom. Yeah. Yes, just like the pillar of creation from Legion. Of course. And it certainly was a loon, because when Chandris asked Tyrande about the purpose of their people's souls, Tyrande revealed that a loon didn't tell her. And Tyrande said a loon. So overall, I think it's pretty damn clear that a loon has made her first ever appearance directly. And the Tyrande... So we're actually going to see a loon in 9.1. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, 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 I say that's cool. I mean, the thing with me is like, I would... If it was up to me, I would kind of not even want it to be shown. Like, I, I think having some mysteries in games makes them more compelling. 
And like whenever all the mystery and whenever everything's explained and it makes sense and it fits together, then it's not really quite as compelling and exciting. Now, is Elune an example of that? It's hard to say. But I do think that Elune was one of those big mysteries in WoW that's been around forever. And like Blizzard just kind of coming out and saying it, especially because it's like a Titan, you know? I think a lot of people expect it to be something like super crazy or whatever. But it just being another Titan, I think for some people that might be disappointing, sure. But she might just have a yeah, she might just have a voice line. That You're Elune's right about that. words came out through Tyrande's lips. Mm -hmm all while she was watching it unfold, feeling outside of herself. It's rather incredible, <laughs> big stuff, isn't it? The first Night Warrior to survive, there's that. And I think more importantly, our first direct interaction with Elun. Elun has spoken words to us, but that is far from all we've learned. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck is this? This is what the Winter Queen had to say afterwards. Alrighty. My sister, after all this time, she did not abandon me. Oh, and there's the game emotes. The barest hint of a smile graces the Winter Queen's face wow. before it is gone. She turns her attention to you with the weight of aeons. Now there is so that just so confirms much, it. Yeah, so much to unpack here. That just completely this is confirms hard confirmation it. Plus that one Elune renown. Yeah, is the Winter Queen's sister. That's big. It is confirmation that Elune abandoned the Winter Queen. Mm -hmm. And that means that at some point they felt close and then became rather estranged. And with this line, okay. we actually know Elune's origin. Elune is not a Light Lord, not a Rogue Void Lord, not a Titan, not an, an Eternal. The Eternal Ones, the Pantheon of Death that we know. Denathrius, the Primus, the Archon, the Winter Queen. They all refer to each other as siblings. And we now have two very intentional times where the Winter Queen has called Elune her sister. And this brings That's up what it yeah, really that big questions. Well, and they also... Like the other Eternals. They also refer to the Jailer as their brother, too. Yeah, I, I think the parents, like, where they came from is the first ones, right? Like, I'm assuming that they were created by the first ones. Like, they never say that anywhere, but that's just what I'm guessing. Did Elune have an original purpose? something she was meant to do as a part of the First One's plan. Mm -hmm. Was she supposed to be a part of the Shadowlands? Perhaps of a Lifelands? Do the First Ones have other Eternals scattered throughout the cosmos? Yeah, they're Is opening there a that up. with its Pantheon of Life in the same way that we've got the Material Plane and its Pantheon of Order? Well, let's sort this thing out, okay. starting with an old friend. A remnant of power lingers in this broken temple. It must be ours. Come, enter the circle and take it. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> My mistake. It seems the upstart goddess still holds sway here. Oh. oh well. This is played when the blade-wielding priest attempted huh. to absorb Elune's power in the Temple of Elune back in patch 7.2. It doesn't go well, the priest almost dies. But the point, of yeah. course, is Elune being referred to as upstart goddess. Okay. Now combine this with what we just found out from the Winter Queen, and okay. I think it's all becoming rather clear. Elune obviously rejected her lot in life and decided to take to the stars, doing what she felt was right. Wait, so doesn't that mean Elune is pretty much the same as the Jailer? Because if, if they were all siblings and the Jailer was like the bad version, Elune was like the good version. You see what I'm saying? So Elune is like the uh, the antithesis of the Jailer. Yeah, she's a strong, independent goddess. Exactly. I, I feel like that's kind of what they're what, what they're building up did, to. Just that Zoval likely betrayed his kin in a far more direct and painful way. The guy's a dick. Resulting uh, in his and Elune ran away. Now you yeah. have to wonder here why Blizzard are going so hard in this Elune lore right now. You know why we've got this event of Toronto being stripped of her Night Warrior powers. I have to wonder, could it be that Elune is our patch 9.2 reveal? Is that a part of what defeats Zoval? Elune finally returning to her people, to her place, her plane? It's hard to say. That's what it's got to be. Ian has a coast as did say that patch 9.2 story it, it, that's what was it's going gotta to be, be. mind-bending and explosive. Yeah. You know that the end of the raid would be incredible. But of course, that's not got too far ahead of ourselves because 
We have so much to work out. Okay. Universal Warrior Let's Goddess. look at what Alun has actually done over the years. Alun has been okay. working with Order. The Tears of Alun. Where have we seen that before? Yeah. Of course, Legion. It was a pillar of creation. It was used to fight disorder. It was also used to order the planet. So yes, that is a direct link between Alun and the Titans. And it's one that goes okay. way back because, yes, those Tears of Alun were used in ancient times to order the planet. It was, in Makes fact, sense. Alun who taught the Kaldori much, including Titan-forged words, potentially even the word Azeroth. Her acts spanned well beyond Azeroth, though. What the fuck? Khadgar, of course, discovered an ancient tome indicating that Elune created the Prime Naru. And later in the Legion expansion, a tear oh. of Elune is used I didn't know that. to awaken Zira. Now that we, of course, know the tears so of the Elune Naru are from come Elune, from Elune and not Aenar, that makes complete sense. It yeah. makes the Elune to light connection even more clear, for it was her tear that was able to reawaken one of her creations in Zira. Going cosmic, Elune mm -hmm. has got confirmed worshippers everywhere. We have met night warriors from other worlds, and interestingly, they all call her Elune as well. So, okay. like with Azeroth, could she have taken a personal interest in other races and worlds across the cosmos? I'm surprised Blizzard hasn't just, like, randomly thrown out other worlds and been like, yeah, this is another world that, you know, you just didn't know about yet, but now you do. Like, they actually haven't done that a whole lot. I mean, they're kind of doing that with the Ethereals, but I'm expecting that to happen way, way more. And, uh, yeah, I do think they're trying to, like, make it more of, like, a... Like, kind of expand the scope of what the lore is. At least, like, that's what it seems to me. Maybe even Argus? Well. Argus was in the game, like, no, Argus has been in the game forever, man. Like, Argus is where the Drain Eye came from. Like, that was in the game since BC. Personally, as she did with Azeroth. Like, say, birthing Argus scenarios. invasions, good point. A wild Very god point. who embodies his mother's boundless love for life. Yeah. And, of course, his father, Malorn's magical connection to the Emerald Dream. You do have to wonder, will Blizzard make there be a lifelance with a pantheon of life? And will they bring in another connection there? Yeah, that could be a little bit weird. Of course, then, just look at the Kaldori culture. It is split between the priestesses of Elune and the druids of the Emerald Dream. Okay. It's a society entirely geared towards the balance and the protection of life and nature. Yeah, it makes sense. And that is a pattern that likely reflects Elune's ultimate ambition to protect and to cherish the life of the cosmos itself. Okay. Of every, life everywhere. Okay. Could this pattern be seen elsewhere then? Well, beyond this, we know that Aenar hid from the Legion on a world called Elunaria. Now, we've got that data point. And the other one... Oh, yeah, because in Antorus. Tears of Elun I remember was that. Aenar's Pillar of Creation. Because there was a Pillar of Creation for every... I'm glad that they made Aenar hot. Like, I was kind of worried that whenever they, they were going to put her in the game, that I was worried that she wasn't going to be hot. And it was, yeah, it was huge relief, guys. Huge fucking relief. Is Elune the Sargeras of the Eternal Ones? No, no, that's the Jailer. Elune is like, uh, I, I don't know. She, she just, she ran away from home. Okay, let's say that. She ran away from home. Titan, the Hammer of Kazgaroth, the Eye of Amunthul. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the Tears of Aenar, it was the Tears of Elune. True. And because of True the Tears of Elune being Aenar's pillar, and Aenar hiding out in Elunaria, I think we can assume that Aenar and Elun are especially well acquainted. It's kind of odd that that information has been kept I from us. I think that's what would make sense, yeah. But there are more odd things. Okay. There's a massive mystery to unfold. The mystery of the light. Elune's role in the light is downright confusing. So we know that the Void Lords are the ultimate villain, in a way, okay. at least we thought and that they are stuck outside of creation. They're unable to manifest themselves in our universe. If they wanted to do that, too well, one of their old god creations would have to corrupt Azeroth and use right. that power. Now, we also know that the light and the void are opposites, but more in the way that they are sides of a coin. And that makes sense because we know that a Naru can turn from its light state into its void state. That's a really hard boss. Oh shit, Elune created the Naru. Yeah. The narrow uh, they can go obviously. void. 
if they get interfered with. Yeah, obviously. Double O shit. This is what Zalatath had to say about them. Okay. I know the Naru consider us horrors to be resisted. We do not share this view. They are merely beloved brethren that lost the true path. They will return to their masters in time. So they're supposed to be right. void? Elune created the Void's long-lost brethren, the Naru. You know, that bunch okay. that, usually when mortals interfere with them, as Locust Walker remarked upon, uh, they turn into a state of Void. And as seen in the Legion Priest campaign, they could even turn into a Void God, a very powerful entity of the Void. Now, Elune has been seen as a moon goddess. And that stuff, it's very much rooted that's in our yeah, literal planet said forever. Earth and its moon, its culture. We, of course, have a tidally locked moon that's got mm -hmm. a light side and a dark side. Her creation, the Naru, have a light side and a dark side. For a loon herself, mm -hmm. we have seen both the serene goddess and the rage-fueled vengeful warrior. A light side and a dark side. So the night warrior Something was from went a void lord? There is another aspect to a loon. Wait, what? From the void? We see all of his beauty, this wonder, this protection of life. What and then the we fuck? see the sheer fury and rage and destruction of the Night Warrior persona. There is more to loon than just the Serene Moon Goddess. That actually makes a lot of Something sense. Something went down here, and it went down long, long ago. Yeah. And we have absolutely no idea what it could be. But clearly, loon has got deep ties to the strongest forces in Warcraft. Hell, those Naru that she created even went on to invade Revendreth, to True. invade the realm of her brother. Of course, Denathrius's Nathrazim had infiltrated the light, so the light went scorched earth. Now, by this stage, the Stone Rite, who actually was the first Night Warrior, well, she had died. Oh, wow. So, an ex-Night Warrior defended Revendreth from Elune's creation, the Naru. What the who fuck? Who were trying to fight Elune's brother. So the light, the Naru, probably knew what Denathrius was up. Bro, this shit's complicated. Bro, what? Like, what the fuck, man? Like, how do you... See, like, Blizzard has, like, all these intricacies. And the game's, like, super complicated. You've got no idea what's going on. It's like, oh, it's this thing, it's that thing, it's the other thing. Holy shit, man. Like, yeah, they, this is strong. Yeah, they have really good weed in California, exactly. Uh, it's not complicated. The thing is, I do think it's complicated. Yeah, it's absolutely complicated. Too. But of course, Elun, did she? Did she not? We do not know. We Even cannot the, know at this stage. <laughs> Even the lore has systems. I like that, yeah. I mean, even though the Naru, they, they were fighting Denathrius, who, of course, by that mm -hmm. stage, had uh, turned against the other Eternals. Yeah. As he, of course, had secretly allied himself with Zovel, the Jailer. Well, who's also an Eternal. Confusing, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's a lot going on here. It's very More than we know right now. Elune has been clearly involved with mm -hmm. a lot here, and very little of this stuff is stuff that we understand solidly. Okay. Now, that said, I think there are some solid conclusions that we can draw. So let's do that. Preliminary conclusions. It's time to bring okay. this all together. Here we go. And see Q where is almost we stand done, by the with Elune. Elune was created by the first ones. The grand yep. ordering, the creation of the fundamentals of the cosmos. The creation of the forces. The gods. And the yeah. systems that would set up and Until we get to them and then there'll be something above them. This happened at or before the creation of the cosmos as we know it. Mm-hmm. And like with the other Eternal Ones, she would have had a purpose. Though, she's an upstart goddess. So she clearly turned on her purpose. She turned her back on what she was meant to do, and she abandoned her siblings. She did what she wanted The other to do. Eternal Ones. Yeah. She probably left because she saw how hostile the cosmos was, and had a boundless love for life that she needed to protect. Yeah, she's she, like I the anti She, then traveled the cosmos and protected life wherever it appeared. Okay. Personally, interacting with civilizations, religions being formed around her, and expanding the influence of, in my opinion, the lifelands. Of course, what we think of as the Emerald Dream, I believe, is but a realm of the lifelands. This is a self-imposed... I thought the lifelands would just be like, you know, Azeroth whenever you're not dead. You, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't that just be everywhere else besides Shadowlands? Wouldn't that just be the Lifelands? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. That's what made sense to me. Yeah, the Lifelands. That's a dude. If they do the light, I swear to God, if there's an expansion called the Lifelands, I am going to mauled out. Mission that brought her into opposition with disorder, void, and uh -huh. death. Of course, via the jailer. And in response, she allied with the forces of order and of life. I then okay. think that she created the Prime Naru to give light form, to give light the form and the sentience that it would need to help in this cosmic struggle. Mm -hmm. So she worked with the Titans, theory. helping yeah, of course to order world theory. souls uh, know, and protect the life that thrived in the surface of those worlds. She worked theory. with the light, creating the Prime Naru and okay. perhaps directing that Prime Naru force against the Nathrazim in the Shadowlands, depending on what she knew or not. She okay. established a relationship with life, as we see expressed with her interactions with the Emerald Dream. Elune, ultimately, is an expert in cosmic warfare, in the grand game being played between all the various forces. What the fuck? We had previously speculated what the fuck? that Elune was in fact some sort of omni-god, one who really stood above all, above the titans. Yeah. Literally, the thing that the whole cosmic chart fed into. See, I always thought Elun, like, this is, like, my assumption, is that Elun was, like, uh... It was, like, kind of, like, another just primal force. It wasn't, like, really above the Titans or, like, or anything like that. It was, like, just another primal force that existed in the universe, right? And, and there was no real ordering of it. Now, what I think, it, what I think they're gonna do is... It does make sense, though. Like, if the Jailer is, like, this super powerful threat... And it does make sense that Elune will be involved in terms of beating the Jailer. That does definitely make sense. I think we were wrong. But in a way, what we got's not that far mm -hmm. off. Because she does remain an incredibly powerful, godlike figure. You know, she yeah, started exactly. off like the Winter Queen, but who knows how much more powerful she is now. But... While the whole universe doesn't feed into her or something like that, we do see her have this massive cosmos spanning influence, right? All towards her own goal. And we don't know exactly what that goal is yet, but all signs do seem to point towards Elun having our back as we take our next big step right. in the increasingly strange That's cosmic good. journey through the Warcraft universe. That's good. Though I'd still really like to know why she, um, you know, what aided a few individual characters in the War of Thorns, but ultimately let Talrasil burn. Yeah, uh, the reason is because the, the the lore is so complicated that Blizzard forgets. Like, it, it, it's so fucking convoluted and complicated that they literally can't keep track of everything that's happening. That's what I really think it is. I don't think it's some sort of, like, fucking, you know, like, they, well, they'll write something, and then, like, three months later, after they write something else, and they put it out, like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, wait, wasn't Elune supposed to be helping the people that burned down the tree that we're now saying Elune made? Uh, yeah, um, okay, so... Oh, shit, okay, uh... Okay, give me a minute on that one. We gotta... Yeah, pass me another joint, I'll figure it out. Give me just one second. A and that's what it was. Like, guaranteed, that's what it is. Because there's no way that this this is all planned out. And in my opinion, let, let me just finish the video, right? But like, I wanna say that I do think that stories like WoW are better whenever they're simple. And really what the goal for all those Night Elf souls is, because yeah. clearly, Taronda and Chandris are wondering, we mm -hmm. are too. So I sure hope Elune didn't let that tree burn when she could have otherwise made it not be so. And that is it for today's lore video. Okay, that's Damn, interesting. Elune. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't think we'd get this one so quickly. And I would encourage Blizzard to go nice and slow, because mythology is awesome, and some things are best not exactly. left explained. Yeah, that is exactly. If you enjoy this content and would like to, uh, well, support the people who make it and also get some pretty sweet mm -hmm. loot for your person, you can check out the Patreon. But with that said, That's what I thank you for happen. watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about that happening too, uh, of them just kind of uh, going and explaining it away and not having the same level of, uh, of mythology and wonder of it.
Because, like, in some, uh, to some level, like, having that mythology and wonder in a game is, like, in my opinion, super fucking important. And if a game doesn't have that, you lose a certain degree of, uh... It's the wonder, right? The, the imagination. Yeah, because, like, basically, if you know that it's from A to Z, you know how many alphabet letters, or how many letters are in the alphabet, right? Or it's 1 to 10. But if you don't know it's 1 to X, you don't know what it's going to go all the way to, the open-endedness of it, I actually think, really makes it bigger. So, in a way, by not telling you things, it allows people's imaginations to imagine that things are bigger than what they are. And I think there's like a few examples of this that I, I can use, right? And one of them is, I, I think that like Game of Thrones, right? There are like magical forces in Game of Thrones, but they're very ethereal. They're very theoretical. And it's not like you just have this magic force and you can just channel this force into doing this thing. So, yeah, I know Game of Thrones ended badly, right? That doesn't really, it's not the point that I'm making. Um, the idea of like the mythology in Game of Thrones is of these weird, like hard to know and hard to understand, like who, the Lord of Light, what the fuck is that, right? And those kinds of things make the game feel a lot bigger. And like Sargeras back in the day, nobody really understood like how, like how powerful Sargeras was, if Sargeras could ever be stopped with the Burning Legion. Like we never even saw him on the screen. You gotta keep that in mind. Like, I think that one time you saw, like, his eyes or something like that in Warcraft 3, maybe? But other than that, until the end of Legion, we never saw Sargeras. We, we, there was, like, you didn't know who he was, and it was, like, this, you know, this, like, mythical beast that you're just not supposed to fuck with, right? And, uh, it was KJ. Oh, that was KJ. It's hard for me to remember. Alarian Terralian story was myth for a long time. Yeah, exactly. And, like, having those, having those things that are kind of, uh... Just unknown forces, I think, actually makes games much more interesting. And the more that you explain those kinds of things, that's okay to some degree. Like, they're trying to replace it with, like, the first ones and stuff like that. I get that, right? And then there's mystery around those characters. But the problem is that, like, you can't replace a mystery from 15 years ago with a mystery from last month and then expect people to hold them in the same regard. So I think that's one big issue, for sure. Kind of lame how he so showed Sargeras humping Azeroth. I actually think that Sar the Sargeras cinematic was perfect. Well, no, 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 sorry. I think the Sargeras, like, how they showed him was absolutely perfect. Like, that is exactly what I expected Sargeras to be. It was perfect in my mind. The only thing that I didn't like is the fact that it didn't go anywhere. Like, you never talked to Sargeras. Illidan wasn't like, I'm prepared for you. He wasn't, like, Sargeras wasn't like, how the fuck, I thought I got rid of you. There was nothing. It was just a, uh, like, his legs hidden in a shroud, etc. That's just because they didn't want to code the leggings, right? But you see what I'm saying, though. They, they really did Sargeras dirty? Well, the reason they did him dirty is they wanted to leave mystery so they could make him an expansion in a couple of years from now. That's what I'm assuming. I'm, Sar I'm assuming that Sargeras, there will be some sort of void-related expansion. This is my prediction. There will be a Void-related expansion, and Sargeras and Illidan will return as a team on our side to help fight against the Void Lords. That's what I think is going to happen. Interesting to look at? Yeah, that's what- it sounds dumb as fuck. Well, every expansion sounds dumb as fuck, right? I mean, like, if, if you break it down, like, I can explain any expansion, and I can explain it in a way that will make you think it's the dumbest thing ever. Okay, a hundred percent you can do that. Yeah, it doesn't mean it has to be dumb at all. Cataclysm? Yeah, there's a dragon that was somehow, he's so big that Azeroth, he destroys Azeroth just by flying around and we could never see him and somehow he made a deal with goblins that we never talked to before even though goblins are in the game regularly. Somehow they all kept this secret that they were secretly armoring Deathwing and then he flies up and this tries to destroy everything. Yeah, it, it the thing is anything you can... You can make anything like that sound stupid. Uh, is Illidan with the, uh, is Illidan with the her? No, I think Illidan is, um, I always expected, so this is my opinion. I always expected Illidan to, to start, like, fucking have a romance with Maiev. You know, it's like, uh, it's like the good girl finally fucking turns and, and starts dating the bad boy. Illidan love Taronda, though? Well, that's the thing, is like, that just makes Illidan look like a pussy, dude. Illidan loves Taronda? 
10, like imagine getting cucked for 10,000 years. People start writing fucking manifestos at two years. This guy's been doing it for 10,000. Think about it, like the ultimate simp. Like really, he is the, uh, the friend zone for 10,000 years. No wonder he's fucking mad. And then she was date like, I mean, you know, they could have hooked up a little bit while Malfurion was asleep or something, but she didn't even want to do that.